Shaw's, sparking innovative thoughts. Now, when you talk about the construction industry, whether it's in Thailand or in other countries, it's pretty much a place where people don't really know what's going on most of the time, right? Because it's kind of a grayish area, an industry that people may not think about when you you think about startups. But there's one guy who has really brought this into the light and has brought a lot of attention to it, especially here in Thailand, and that is Kun Bot. Uh, his nick- nickname is Bot. Uh, his real name is Patai Padung Tin. He is one of the co-founders of Bilk One Group, which is uh, the first web application for construction businesses in Asia. It's committed to driving the transformation of the construction industry and technology. Uh, creativity here in Southeast Asia, and he's not only that; he's also the founder and the president of the Thailand Tech Startup Association, the first in Thailand. Hello, Sadika. สวัสดีครับ Hi, ทุกเป้ I'm so excited because we're back again with our podcast, and we are so happy to have you, P. b o t I'm calling you P because in Thai, you know, we we address our seniors as P, right? Sure. Um, because Of the fact that you are not only just one of the startups that people look up to, but you've been here for quite some time, yeah. and that's a good thing. And still survive. That is a very good thing. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about it. Uh, over the past 12 years, how has Buke changed the the construction industry? Um, thank you for having me here. Um, I think for the past 12 years, I and our team Buke has changed. Thai construction industry and Southeast Asian construction industry in a bit cooler way. It used to be like k u n p u p e said. It used to be like dull and something dangerous and dirty industry. Literally, is this brick and mortar industry, right? Um, but over the past 12 e years, what we did is we tried to make um, tweak in terms of uh, what people, how people work, and uh, make it. Easy, easier, um, and more productive, using creativity and technologies. It's not only make an app or web applications or mobile app. I think we try to make creative business model on top of the industry because construction tech is not that new actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, in global scale, so many construction tech unicorns out there, but. The situation is not the same here in developing countries mm-hmm. because the pay rate, salary of engineer and architect here is totally different from from the developed country, right? Yeah. So it makes sense to to digitalize it in the Western uh, market, but here everything is cheap. You can hire uh, workers. Um, yeah, this is Southeast Asia, and people here back then, 12 years ago. They still use uh, pirate software. Nobody cares about intellectual properties. And... I remember those days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That that is past 12 years, but today it's getting better. Yeah. So people ad- adopt a uh, uh, basic uh, digital transformation. The digital literacy getting better and better, right? But anyway, when when you want to change the industry, you need to understand it and do it locally. Work work around what people uh, perceive the value. So we we start with the crazy idea in starting in 2010. Mm-hmm. We want to make the first kind of like a mini ERP, the the back end of the company management system, mm-hmm. uh, totally free, 100% free, mm-hmm. free of charge. Mm-hmm. That is a crazy idea because in in the Western market, if you do any. Enterprise solutions, you need to charge per user or subscription per month or whatever. But here we want to make it free because we want to make a first-time adoption for the industry people. So we have to fight on not only just giving away free software is going to change. Free software people might not understand it. We have to educate them. I travel around. Every province of Thailand to meet construction people, uh, it's build up the community and keep changing. So it's quite a long time, 12 years. But 
after that, it's it keeps changing from the grassroots of the industry, small and medium builders and contractors has been changed. And then uh, we have uh, different solutions for uh, bigger contractors, uh, the suppliers, the subcontractors uh, across the supply chain. So today we are totally changed many groups of people. Yep. Actually, I was thinking about that my mind went along with what you said. I wasn't shocked when you said you made it cheaper or you made it for free because when you talk about technology and, and introducing that into any industry, there's always the battle between the, the traditional way of doing things and the new way of doing things. And people, old, old people can be stubborn, mm. right? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Right. Especially in the in the construction industry. Yeah. You're yeah. talking about real, like, you know, old school. Old school, old yes. Old school yes. stuff. So we'll talk about those challenges later. But um, let's talk about how, you know, you have launched a lot of different services. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just for any startup to do one kind of SKU, it's, it's already difficult enough. How do you come up with the new business model successfully? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, not all of my business models are successful. Mm -hmm. um, before I start build, actually I was in a tech company and SMEs back then. Um, I have built up some skill to make a company survive. But when entering uh, as a startup, right, uh, we have to embrace the concept of fail fast and do many new things. Um, actually, I think our our way of expansion is coming from we always revisit our previous uh, advantage and startup terms this could be like unfair advantage every day you know we we have built up our unfair advantage you have yesterday if you when you start uh, a new startup you have nothing but along the way you are build up your product you build up your user base you build up your data point and you build up your business model, it always keep building up things, right? So our idea of building a new business model is coming from what we already have and how can we make use of that advantage over the time. And we keep developing, developing. Why we have to create a new business model? Because we want to, I think two things, we want to survive. <laughs> we want to survive because we believe that every day there are new startups out there, that they are smarter than me, uh, better fundraising than me, coming from overseas to enter this market. And if I move too slow, I'm going to die. So this business gonna not, can, cannot be survived. Or I want to make a room for opportunity for our our member as well. So if we see potential over our advantage and our team member is ready to take that adventurous opportunity, okay, as a startup, um, I think it's, let's try, right? And I, I think as an entrepreneur myself, I would like to make our team members feeling the same way. Yeah. So it, it's quite a conflict a conflict of thought, like you want to build your company and you want to keep your people to work for you, right? Yeah. Um, but I believe in power of entrepreneurship. Um, if they feel like what I used to feel when I start this company, they might make it happen. So currently we have uh, nine services in the market, mm -hmm. but so far we built like around 14 products, 14 services. Some of them died. Some of them cannot find the right business model to survive. But now nine services is quite strong enough and it's complement to each other. Um, it makes our group um, stronger and leverage uh, each platform, each service together to change the industry. Yeah, that's exactly what a lot of corporates are doing. Mm -hmm. They're they're of course of course you know in, empowering the people in their organization because they want to keep them, but they also want to grow. Yeah, and it's smart as well as you said, like you build on what you have. I just want it to be clear for those who are listening right now. There's not like a you know a success overnight, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you said nine services. Yeah. How many ideas 
Did you look at before you actually came out with okay. the nine services, yeah. just for people to understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Actually, so many ideas, and each idea coming up with the different business model of choices. So one services, let's say it could be from free services or subscription or uh, like project based implementation. So so many choices. So when you want to test your idea, and you also have to test. The potential business model to make sure that you're gonna survive and in the long term as well. So, I cannot count it. Uh, so many, so many choices of possibilities, right? Um, and different situation, different market situation is coming up. With let's say when we when we start some services in the late stage of the market, we are the late comer. Mm -hmm. So what we gonna do? It mm -hmm. might be different business model or different value proposition that you're gonna propose. Um, I think it's fun for for me, and sometimes I I become a mentor of other young startups outside. I feel like I'm I enjoy mentoring. So in my company as well, each startup, each services become my mentee, and I'm mentoring uh, internal startup like I mentor outside. That's cool. So for those people who are listening, if you want to expand your services, like uh, you know what uh, what people is doing, is, of course, is built on what you have. But also, there are other factors that you need to think about as well in terms of your your environment. Uh, you know, the early stages, the late stages, and and just be practical, right? Yeah. I do, I don't want to ask this question because a lot of people don't have the right answer. But time frame. Like how how long do you test out one idea? Ah, oh, okay. Um, I think it's getting shorter and shorter. Yeah. Um, the first idea that we tried, I think we don't have experience enough. Mm -hmm. And when we read uh, books about startup, people say uh, lean startup, do it quick, do it fast. Mm -hmm. But we don't we, we don't really know how fast it is because we don't have experience. Mm -hmm. I, I I haven't. I have no experience working with other startups. So this is I try to to learn by myself. So the first projects could be like around eighteen months. Eighteen months. Yeah, to to validate and and build up things. But right now it could be shorter. Um, I think our latest projects that quite successful is like nine months, nine wow. months, um, and we 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 can make it product market fit and we launch it. So I think. You can learn along the way, but it could not be longer than like 18 months or two years. I think that's great. Actually, you are the person to ask because mm -hmm. you know why? You've been in the in the ecosystem for a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and talking about that 12 years, right? You're one of the initial members of the startup ecosystem here in Thailand. So, of course, you've had a lot of things that you know, you've learned and experienced. Um, and I, I, you've given a lot of interviews, and I'm sure fans of yours have probably listened to a lot of the different stories that you have to share. But maybe you have one that you haven't talked about, mm -hmm. one that has mm -hmm. been very tough, mm -hmm. a, a, a challenge that has been, you could say, in ties like jip board. It hurts. <laughs> it hurt a lot, okay. but then it made you grow stronger, right? So, mm -hmm. do you have a, a story to share? Um, yeah, I think personally. I'm a pioneer of startups. I'm doing trial and error by myself, reading, listening to podcasts, to uh, conference overseas, and I try to adapt it. But it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. You cannot just copy and paste what like uh, startup gurus say here in Thailand, because the so many so many contexts that that it doesn't apply here, and. But for me, when I when I embrace th those knowledge, that knowledge, and I, I try to um, share with others, right? What I feel is I cannot practice what I preach. Oh, yeah. You mean Sometimes, like you cannot do what yeah, you tell other people to do? Yeah, I think we read it like lean startup, and at the first first I think first three or four years. I cannot do it. Everybody knows about the concept, right? Yeah. But when you do it by yourself, like you, you can you kill your product that you are building, you dream of it before, and it's time to kill it. Mm. I cannot do it by myself. It but hurts. but I go out and I say it in the stage on the stage that <laughs> hey, I'm, let's do lean startup, man. It's so cool. But I cannot do it by myself. So what I feel internally is 
it's kind of fake. <laughs> but but finally, um, after I come back from from Silicon Valley, so I have a short time um, in the acceleration program there. Um, we try to learn and feel the the real startup how how they work, right? I, I I can see one of my classmate batchmate in the accelerator. They they shut down their startups. They uh, sometimes they cannot go further. Um, I think it's time to time to realize. For me, it's to be fair. Um, failure is not that bad, mm-hmm. and it's, it's your choice to call to make a call, right? I launched one of the service that I try to, as a CEO, as a the idea uh, owner, right? I I try to make it. Let's do it. Make it happen, and we cannot fail. We are the yeah, that the boss cannot be failed to for, to others, right? People, yeah. uh, but finally, I I think it's time to make a call, and I shut down the services. Um, my staff shocked, our user shocked that what's going on. Um, but yeah, I think it's time to realize that um, you cannot be pretended to be success all the time. Yeah, and after that, I think I I can proudly say. I understand the keyword of uh, build things, measure it, and learn it, and sometimes kill it. <laughs> <laughs> so that is currently we have nine products that survive. Some of them that I kill, the idea that we killed um, is a uh, is the graveyard that we proud of today. Uh, it makes us stronger to the, till today. I think it's it's definitely to be true to yourself, and I understand yeah. you completely. How it's easy to say do this, but then when you actually do it, it it's it's tough. Yeah. Now, um, this is a question from our team. Our team here at Tech Sauce seems to like Dragon Ball. They said <laughs> in the past twelve years, Buke has gained much insight, of course. But you know, if you talk about the regional level, right? It's mm-hmm. a bigger pond or yeah, a bigger yeah, yeah. sea. Uh, for those people who know Dragon Ball, which honestly I don't, okay, <laughs> maybe you can explain to me, okay, uh, and what in in terms of you're a character in the Dragon Ball uh, world, yeah, yeah. what transformation stage are, is your company at? Yeah, yeah, I, I like this question. Uh, because, first, first, let's explain what okay. uh, Dragon Ball is and how many levels there are. I like that. I'm, I'm one of the Dragon Ball fans. Okay, okay. <laughs> and um, yeah, Dragon Ball always. Uh, tell us that there are always people that are better than you. Always have the, the better power, HP or new level of, of your, your competitor, your opponent out there, right? And you have to develop yourself. Um, from Dragon Ball, I think the first stage is before Super Saiyan that we're going to talk later. I think it's about... I'm, I'm trying to follow. Yeah, yeah. Super I'm Saiyan is a, like an alien, <laughs> ape-like <laughs> superheroes. Okay, okay, so wait, so for those people who don't know, Dragon Ball is a uh, Japanese... <laughs> Jap- yeah, Google it. Dragon. Dragon. Like ball, as in ball. Okay. You hit there, and and okay. it's like an anime, right? It's uh, a yeah, cartoon. Yeah. Okay. And, and like... I don't want to compare to others because I'm such a like I'm not into this world. Okay. But like in other stories, right? You okay. have to level up, right? Like any yes. games, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. yes. Okay. But from the the Earthling, the people in on Earth, and they have to fight with uh, like an aliens, and they have a new um, invader coming to 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 invade the Earth, right? Okay. Um, I think I'm I'm just an an Earthling, a man. <laughs> In, in, in this planet, on this planet, that uh, we try our best to to power up. Um, I've learned from some many master, and okay for for those who haven't seen me in personal, I'm kind of like Dragon Ball character called Krillin. Krillin is a a bow head um, Earthling that try to fight with Super Saiyan. Um, <laughs> along the way, um, the the main character is developing in terms of they have level one super saiyan, level two, level three, level four, and so on. And like a god super saiyan today, oh, okay. oh, so many levels. But I can say that we are still like we feel like we are not yet super saiyan. Oh. We 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 try to develop ourselves, but we until some certain level, certain level, we feel like. Um, 
I understand that they always have people ahead of me, but we have been good enough in develop our country, our level, and I feel comfort at this level. Um, like I'm go to Zen mode, and I feel like this is okay, and I understand how worlds work, how these things around me work, and it should be enough for me. Mm. I'm quite happy at this stage, um, and. I'm I'm not block myself to further development, but I think I I come beyond my first expectation, mm-hmm. and it's fair enough. From like 12 years ago. Yeah, before that, I was a contractor by myself. I have to supervise the road construction. When I was in Silicon Valley, I I asked myself why I'm he- I'm doing what I'm doing here. Yeah. <laughs> I should be like. Supervise the the manhole <laughs> near Sukhumvit Road. That is my. I used to be there, ah. right? Uh, on on the midnight and road close, and I have to inspect the the road work that I've done. Coming to tech world, I cannot code. I I don't know anything. But I want. I wish that I I can change the industry. My partner, my co-founder, helped me make this thing happen, and I. I have to practice my pitch. I have to practice my English, talking to people like you guys, and <laughs> understand the new terms of startups or growth mindset, whatever. It's it's beyond my imagination, and I keep develop myself. At, it was the pressure at at the first time, the first stage. I try to learn online and to catch up. Not just startup. I try to catch up with people in the industry. In the when I. Compare myself to to my friends in the acceleration program. I feel like I'm I'm I know nothing, but they are so smart. Um, I practice and I feel like I can catch up. And after that, I develop my business from zero to some certain level today. Um, we reaching like a mature stage. Um, we can make profitable and we expand to overseas. It's beyond my imagination. I think it's. Uh, comparing to Dragon Ball, I still Quillin. I still Quillin. I'm not Super Saiyan yet. Oh, it's, it's coming. <laughs> I think it's coming. But you know what? I think your story or what you said is common. It's very common. Mm-hmm. Everyone feels that they're they're not good enough, mm-hmm. or they feel like, "Oi, I'm I'm just I don't know if I can catch up, right?" Mm-hmm. But you are, you know, proof, mm-hmm. evidence that mm-hmm. if you just keep at it, you know, mm-hmm. you just try mm-hmm. for 12 years, you can survive. Yeah. So when you talk about 12 years, you know, what is the key to your success? What makes it? Wh- how did you get here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what was? If you look back, I know it's very you know hard to think about it. But yeah. what do you think was the number one thing, or the the one thing that you think was the one that you know the key to to think, having you can, be can, can get here? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think first one is like I feel like um, persistent. Perseverance. I don't know. Um, I keep doing it. Perseverance. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. I keep oh. doing it. Um, I think it's is add up to my next things is about I'm set the expectation of doing this business, and I think it's, it's a long term game. I I don't think it's short term. So I'm um, like a Gen X. Secondhand entrepreneur. I used to run SMEs before, right? I call myself secondhand entrepreneurs. So I used to do something, and the startup is like my reboot of entrepreneurship. Um, so I feel like it's not a Cinderella story that you you read it, make it quick, short, and become a, a unicorn mm-hmm. pop up. No. So I, I expect that it's going to be a long game. So expectation, and then keep doing it. I think that is the two things that keeping me um, alive, want to work over these 12 years, and every day is like an add up on on my journey. Mm-hmm. I think the key of expectation is you can learn from from my generation. Uh, I think young generation might feel like everything is fast, is short because yeah, you, in Thai it's like Jai Ron. Jai Ron, yeah, 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 it's like very like just. Now, 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 now. And yeah, you yeah. can't blame them yeah, because yeah, yeah. right now in the world that they live, they live in a yes. TikTok world. Yes. <laughs> TikTok world where everything has to go like fast, fast, fast. Yes, yes, yes. Right? It, that's not always good. 
Yeah, but okay. So I have to practice and keep practice and keep learning, doing things until nobody knows when when the result gonna come. And the result is not what always what you expected, right? Um, so to manage your expectation and to manage others' expectation around you. So when doing a startup. Personal expectation is a key. Next, your family, maybe your parents or your family, is expect. They also expect what from you as well. And your staff, you have to manage your staff expectation, and also your investor. When you got the investment, this is not, this is not for free, right? Yeah. They invest, and because they have expectation on you, uh, they give you hundred million, and they expect from that. Uh, you have to manage it well. Mm-hmm. So I think. Along the way, I learned about expectation. So today, I will not make over promise on on what I can do, and I'm happy to make like over deliver on, on to that expectation. It's really hard for, yeah. especially when you have startups pitching. Yes, <laughs> we are so cool. We change the world, and yeah, give me money. <laughs> Okay, but uh, any 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 further? I mean, the, the next question I was going to ask is about you know from your story, right? To now, advice to the the startups that are coming out, the the young people. Yeah. If you have one sentence again, one uh-huh. sentence to tell them if you're listening, what would that sentence be in terms of the key advice for the young right. startups? So I, I I like to to tell them about the problem statement that. So normally people think that uh, the startup, you have to solve some problems, right? Yeah. And uh, many startups is trying to, to solve uh, the basic, the surface problems. It's not in the, some deeper or in the, even some vertical. So I think many Thai startups that I've seen is, uh, is the problems allow themselves so if they are students, they're going to be in their education or their dormitory problems around them. But and to, to, to be fair, the world is more complex than that. Um, you have to dig down and understand. You have to be patient to understand the problem, not only like a marginal level. They are in the root cause of that. Um, and that's why I think Thai startup is quite shallow not that deep uh, in, in terms of uh, problem solving and i always say that um on the in the b2b world there are so many problems to solve but young startup or thai startup never seen the opportunity out there so it's like a dark side of the moon that people don't see it people always see the the front of the moon that have rabbits, right? On the dark side of the moon, there are so many opportunities as big as the front, right? Mm. And when you, you talk about B2B opportunities out there, I think Thai startup should work deeper into this opportunity. So my advice is, let's see, and you don't need to be like another me too startup, like let you see Western startup successful and you're gonna do a copy and me too uh, platform like that. Uh, some problems are here in this developing country, developing market. It's unique here. Let's make it happen here, conquer here, and then you can expand. So that is the, the, the lesson learned that I want to share, the problem statement. Try to find it right and make it unique, and you will find it, uh, your unique value proposition to make your startup survive. Oh my God, that well said. I don't want to add because we have limited time. Yeah. What, what is the biggest dream for uh, Bilk right now? Uh, we want to be an example of Thai startup to, to have a choice. So for me, I think um, the good life is have, you have a luxurious of choice, right? So Thai startup as well, you, we have choices. Uh, to choose, um, to be acquired by global startup or to be uh, become a sustainable company or listed in stock market. We, we want to be that that case. We want to be listed in Thai stock exchange um, within a couple of years. Uh, we are uh, fighting for it, um, quite a good progress. Yeah. Oh, we're looking forward to seeing that. And lastly, um, what do you want to see in the Thai startup ecosystem as a guru or as a, a person that has been there? Yeah. Right. I think um, 
like I want to see variety of choice. Mm-hmm. Um, like this is a, a flower field that so many types of flowers and bushes and trees around. And I think Thai startup ecosystem is quite unique. We have big trees, we have corporate, I mean, corporate that can nurture startup internally and external investment. And we have variety, we have some space for overseas startup to grow their opportunity here, uh, use Thailand as a base. And we have a local Thai startup. I think the, the plenty of different shade, different kind of flowers and tr- plants and trees in this ecosystem could be wonderful. So try not to be like others. We want to be your own way, build your own way and be unique. As my most favorite book always says, um, you cannot remember a karaoke singer, be a unique singer, build, uh, write and sing your own song. Oh, okay. Before we go, I have a, a special quiz. No, because we're starting a new series right, on Tech Talks Global, right? So we wanted to make it interesting. What makes you unique, wow. right? You said <laughs> we need to be unique, right? So okay. what makes you people unique? Okay, are you ready? Okay, sure. So this is like kind of like a, a quick, quick question, question, what do you call, drill or flash. Okay, okay, whatever. Anyways, there, it's, it's going to be fun. Okay, ready? Yep. Number one, rice or noodles? Rice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why? Why? No, no, no need to ask why. Okay, rice. <laughs> okay, okay, no, right. Okay, two, flip-flops or shoes? Um, shoes. Okay, ooh, really? <laughs> yes. Oh, really? You? Oh, okay. Three, cat or dog? Oh, uh, no, both of them. <laughs> no, oh. uh, adopt, okay. Oh, uh. <laughs> yeah, good. good answer. <laughs> Four, mountain or sea? Mountain. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, now this is hard. Marvel or DC? Marvel, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good DC. Okay, six. Tea or coffee? Coffee, please. Okay. Uh, book or podcast? Podcast today. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Netflix or Disney Plus? Disney Plus. Oh, really? Okay. Oh. iOS or Android? iOS. And sweet, because we're a tech sauce, mm-hmm. sweet or sour? Sweet. Aw, that's so sweet. Thank okay. you so much, people, Thank for being with us. Sauce, sparking innovative thoughts.